guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. And this is your Champions League quarterfinal first leg preview. And these are some very good matches indeed that we're going to discuss in today's video. So if you're excited, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe, leave your opinions in the comments. And now, the one thing I want to say is having two games at the same time, it's just, it doesn't fit right with me. Honestly, it doesn't. Because there, there are four really, really good matches and you've got to have to select two. In my case, I'll probably try and watch both of them at the same time. But it's just a real shame. I think you want to watch one game at a time, ideally. But it's what it is and just something I want to discuss in general. But let's get into the starting off. We've got Arsenal taking on Bayern. Uh, Bayern, their league season is almost done at the time of recording. Uh, if I look at their time of recording so they are 13 points behind Leverkusen with just seven games to go Thomas Tuchel said in a press conference that they have they congratulate Leverkusen on the title so this is all they've got to play for Bayern Arsenal on the other hand are still fighting for the Premier League title they're doing really, really well and this tie is a really really intriguing one you got a stern tactician in Tuchel very very good knockout coach knockout football coach and Arteta, who also has shown good traits in good cup co in cup competition. Personally, how do I expect this tie to go? I think it's going to be very, very scrappy. I think it's going to be limited action. I think both teams have game changers. Arsenal got Saka. They got uh, uh, Gabriel Jesus uh, or Degard. Uh, you got Kai Havertz, who's been built for a joker card for them. He's worked out really, really well for them. Uh, Trossard, on his day, is a really, really good player. Bayern, of course, we all know Musiala. We know Kane. Uh, but now they have fully played their best in Champions League. I don't think, yes, Bayern won the group uh, in, in the way they did against Copenhagen, Galatasaray and Manchester United. But I don't feel like they were playing at 100%. And I think a similar case for Arsenal. And now they got to get their A game out. Arsenal had to go through penalties to beat Porto, Bayern, comprehensively beating Lazio in that second leg. A much, much better display. Now, this this uh, this one's too close to, I mean, too close to call. I think both teams are really, really good. I think both match up well tactically. I think uh, Tuko will be, I think, looking at this Arsenal team be like, ah, we got this, you know, we can beat them. And I think at the moment, based on how the te two teams look at the moment, I think it's going to be a draw here at the Emirates Stadium. It's going to be Arsenal 1, Bayern Munich 1. Moving over, we've got Real Madrid taking on Manchester City. So Madrid got the home leg, uh, City going away. And similar case, Arsenal at home, Bayern away. But Real Madrid, they had to work hard. They had to work extremely hard to make it through. Uh, Leipzig almost did them over in that second leg. It ended 1-1. Uh, but Real Madrid, they got a lot of quality. They got insane amount of quality. In fact, they're a very, very good, very good team. Very difficult, especially in Champions League. This is like the competition they own. Uh, 14 Champions League titles against the new force in Guardiola City. First of all, Real Madrid, the injuries they had this year, you got Courtois has been out, Militao has been out, you've got Chouamini playing a centre-back. So Real Madrid squad is plunged with injuries. But the amount of talent still in that team is insane. You've got Bellingham, you've got Camavinga, Cruz, Modric, Chouamini, Vini, Rodrigo. Ah, oh, that's, that's so much talent. And they've got game changers for the big stage. And this is why Real Madrid always does well in the bigger games. Their players mentally just turn it on. They're a very, very good team. But they're taking on probably the best team in Europe. I think still Manchester City, who are very, very good indeed. They've got Erling Haaland. You've got De Bruyne. You've got so much quality in both teams. Both teams got game changers. Both teams got tacticians on the sidelines who know what they're doing. Uh, the last time these two met, Manchester City absolutely humiliated Real Madrid, especially in that second leg at the Etihad Stadium. So Real looking to get one over. City here and make it through to the next round. Real Madrid, of course, fantastic um, when they want to be. They are a bit inconsistent at times. City, of course, I feel like they're not the same City of previous years. They're much more defensive-minded. And if you saw the treble season year, yes, they played really well. But that was like the most defensive I've seen City in a while. Uh, but it's a very interesting tie here. I think it's even on paper, I think it's even on everything that you can measure it on, it's just going to come down to moments. It is purely going to come down to moments, I feel, uh, in this tie. And I feel it will be Real Madrid 1, 
Manchester City. I feel Manchester City are just that tad bit off the pace at the moment. Real Madrid, of course, still leading the way in Spain. I think Real Madrid won 1-0. One, one, I think I'm going big here. Real Madrid to beat Manchester City 1-0. Okay, moving over, we've got Paris Saint-Germain taking on Barcelona. Xabi versus Luis Enrique. And this is a very good tie. I, I'm actually really excited for this one. And this is probably my one of my favourite ties. Tactically, I think you've got two very good managers. You've got Xabi. There's been talks about him leaving. Of course, he's announced he's gone leaving. There's been talk about him staying. Uh, Luis Enrique has uh, been looked at as one of the guys who could come in, but... I think if you look at Luis Enrique's job at PSG, he's been very, very good. He's done a good job, in my opinion, with this Paris Saint-Germain side. Uh, the way he's used Mbappe, I think, has been pretty effective. Uh, the quality that PSG have, Lee Kangin, uh, Dembele, who on his day is an absolute baller. You've got Colo Moani, Ramos, Barcola. A lot of quality in Paris Saint-Germain's team. In the group stage, yes, they were shaky. They had to take it to the final match to make it through. But in the knockouts, dispatched. They completely dispatched La Real, who are very, very good. Do not get me wrong. People might say, oh, they were hyped. No, they're not. They're a very, very good team, in my opinion. So PSG sweeping them aside was a very, very good result for PSG. Uh, if I look at the league table, at the moment, I think Paris Saint-Germain are looking very comfortable indeed in the table. Uh, if I look here, it's a league earn. They are 12 points clear with 11 to go. So PSG looking well set. Barcelona, it's been a mix. I won't lie. Barcelona have been a very mixed team this year. Uh, if I look at their recent form, though, uh, Barcelona, they have won their last four in the last five. And eight points behind Real Madrid at the moment. So that looks a long way away at the moment. But they got a good chance against this PSG team. PSG, despite all the positives, despite how much I praise Luis Enrique, defensively, they are a team that will give you a chance. They are definitely that sort of team that will give you a chance. You've got Hakimi, not the strongest defensively. Uh, you've got Skriniar, who's got a bit of an error in it. Bilardo, I'm not going to say anything about him. I think he's a fantastic defender. Bilardo, Lucas Bilardo, he's going to be Brazil's top centre-back in years to come. You've got Lucas Hernandez, who's been playing there a bit more. You've got Nuno Mendes, who plays there as well. You've got Vitinha, who's been playing the six. Uh, but, I think PSG have all stacked. They've got the amount of quality that they do have. It is there, but they can give away goals. Barcelona, of course, with the quality of De Jong. Pedri apparently might not be back for this one. I think, as far as I know, Pedri will be back, which is a real shame. But De Jong, Yamal, Rafinha, Gundogan, they've got quality. Barcelona definitely do have quality, but Barcelona, I just feel like they lack it. They lack something in those bigger games that I feel they could get them on the line. They've not been themselves for years. They haven't performed. And this is a high-pressure game. It's high, high-pressure time. For Barcelona and for Paris Saint-Germain, of course, this is a good year opportunity for them to make the final. They've got to play Atletico or Dortmund in the semi. And then the final, of course, against Arsenal, Bayern or Real Madrid or City. Now, I think PSG will look to dominate with the ball. I think PSG will be looking like the team that's going to play on the front foot. Asking Barcelona to play mostly on the counter. I think Xavi is that sort of coach. He's showing adaptability, he's showing flexibility. And I think Barcelona, with the quality they got, they can score a goal. But I think the quality that PSG do have indeed in their arsenal, it tips the balance in their favour. I think it's going to be high scoring, a lot of entertainment. I'm going 4-2 to Paris Saint-Germain in the first leg against Barcelona. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really good tie. I think I'm really excited to see this tie, to be honest. Okay, moving on, we've got Atletico versus Dortmund. Atletico doing really well to knock out Inter in the penalty shootout. Uh, in the round 16, Dortmund knocking out PSV, which I think was pretty much a formality in the second leg. But, this is a very good tie. Uh, Atletico Madrid, in the league, have been super inconsistent. So, if I get Atletico Madrid's league table up, they've not been the greatest. Let's be completely frank. Uh, they have won two, drawn one, and lost two in their last five. Highly inconsistent Still in the top four. Now, Atletico in the Champions League at the Wanda are a different team. They are a completely different team. They are very difficult to beat on a Champions League night. Wanda turns up. They create a ruckus. Very, very difficult. Inter faced it. Liverpool faced it in the past. City even to an extent faced it when they went to the Wanda as well. Atletico Madrid at home are a different beast. Very, very difficult. And I think Dortmund... Dortmund, if I look at their form... Uh, in the league, 
they have been picking up, picking it up a bit. They are currently fourth in the table, last four matches, four wins. But I just feel like they lack it in the big games. They really, really do, don't Borussia Dortmund. I don't rate Edin Terzic that highly. I think he's done a good job, do not get me wrong, to get uh, Dortmund top that, to top that group of death. And of course, get past PSV. But I think Atletico at home, they're going to play a low block. They're going to look to play on the counter. Dortmund will get frustrated. I think Dortmund's defence does have a mistake in it quite easily. They do concede a lot of silly goals. And this just this just screams out Atletico Madrid. It does. I just don't see a scenario where Dortmund come out winners in this match. I really don't. Maybe in the home leg, Dortmund will turn it on. But for definitely for this game, I am going Dortmund 2. Not Dortmund. Atletico Madrid 2, Dortmund 0. And that will be my prediction. Anyway, this was your... Champion League quarterfinal premium predictions. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me opinions in the comments. And I hope to see you guys later for another video.